Hey, Iron Mateys. I'm going to be installing a bow roller or anchor roller on the boat and just kind of wanted to walk you through some of that. Um, I went with Kingston Anchor. This is uh, made in Kingston, Canada and it's made with um, high-grade U.S. stainless steel. You know, it's got the rollers and this is for, you know, I have a fortress anchor so this is made for that type of an anchor and that's one of the things I kind of wanted to talk about is the process of picking what's the right um, bow roller for your boat and your anchor so the first thing is well what type of anchor is it then you want the overhang from the bow of the boat you want that to be as minimum as possible but long enough that the flukes or the uh, point of the plow are not going to be hitting your boat. Part of that, and you want the anchor to fit up here tight. Now, while you're at anchor, of course, most of the pressure is going to be down. But when you're out in rough seas and that bow is getting into the waves and there's waves coming up on it, that's a lot of pressure. So you don't want this sticking out there, you know, way out like this. You want it as close as you can, but yet far enough that your anchor is, is secure and not hitting the boat. So how do you do that? Well, if you go to Kingston Anchor, you go to their website, then under um, products, you'll see that you have a drop down menu where are we here? okay there we are and you can go by uh, go over to bow roller by anchor type and you pick the type of anchor you have and there you'll get your selections and there's a lot of different one you know again it depends on your boat how much room do you have on the top side to mount the um, bow roller? And just as importantly, how much room do you have on the underside? I don't have a lot of room. My bow is pretty pointed and it's got a good rake to it. So I'm tight on space in there. But I did go, I went with the 22 inch um, bow roller and that's fitting that's going to fit very nice. I've already been on the bow of the boat, set it up, looks like it's going to fit well. Now the other thing is you want it to be flat on the deck. I've got a decorative piece around the top and some wood, so I'm going to have to support that underneath with another piece of wood uh, so that it's flat. You don't want it sitting like this or like this. You want it flat so it has good holding power. The next question is, well, what about the backing plate? Well, the backing plates should be at least one and a half to two times the footprint of what's going down. So I need, this is three inches, so I need at least six inches, and this is six inches from this bolt to this bolt, so I need at least 12 inches, six by 12. It's gonna be tight in there, but it's gonna, it's gonna fit. And then I'm using a three quarter inch um, marine grade plywood, and I'm also gonna epoxy it first. And then when I, I'm using stainless steel bolts, because this is stainless steel, and stainless steel washers, and not the little nickel washers. I mean, I'm going to use some good size ones. You'll see what when we put this together how that all goes. Then the next thing is to cleat off the uh, road. Right now, my cleats are on the starboard and port side. So I need to add another cleat for the road. Now I've picked this one I had and you see it's kind of rounded on the ends here rather than one of the more fancy ones it's kind of you know very round and it's got a sharp point. I don't want to be stubbing my it's still going to hurt if I stub my toe on this but I don't want to be stubbing my toe all the time on this thing so again the backing plate for this 
this is three inches so I need something that's at least six by six to do that with um, I've got something similar to uh, a G10 it, it's not quite that but it's something that I made and compressed it and it's worked pretty good on some other backing plates that I had the idea here is you want to disperse that weight you don't want all of the pressure on those bolts just in one spot you want to spread that weight out a little bit all right guys so here's how the install went for this whole thing the most difficult part was getting in that little hatch to reach the bolts to be able to do the work um, then of course prepping the top side I had to level that one board off a little bit for some reason there was a, it had a little bit of a bump in it so I cleaned that off put the board in place that I needed uh, to make that level and I had planned on epoxying that in but given the cold weather it really wasn't a good option so I used a marine grade caulking for right now to fill that hole and cover the board then maybe later in the summer I'll clean all that up and uh, epoxy that with a uh, little bit of resin and uh, fairing compound so the actual placing of the bow roller I mean you could do it this way which is a little clumbersome or you could do it the easier way take it on shore mount it somewhere take a few measurements now once I got everything figured out where the put the bow roller and you know drill my holes I couldn't get the full-size backing plate in there that I wanted because there were two other bolts in the way I didn't want to have to take all of them out I did get the main part of the uh, backing plate in place though and then with the um, cleat that fit you know perfectly so overall I was pretty happy with the process of how to put that in the, the biggest part is figuring out what you need and how it's going to fit and then installing it was really pretty straightforward once I got all of the parts in place so I'm happy with the way it turned out real happy with the way it looks and it's going to make anchoring a lot easier so anyway guys until next time Happy and safe boating to you, your family, and friends.